testing one two three I think I got sound I think everything else working good to go I think yay here live for once <laughs> all right looks like we got on live here no glitches in the system that I can see it says episode 50 Hall of Fame Friday Nestor Chilak Jr. he's an umpire but we're going to learn about his reason for his induction into the Baseball Hall of Fame this Friday. We've got four thumbs up, three people watching. Started less than an hour ago. Let me get the closed captioning off. I have it turned on on my channel just in case you want to be informed. Okay. So hopefully you all are having a good Friday. Nice to be with you here. Um, can't think of anything else to go on to in the world of happenings here. But other than that, we will have some fun today with episode number 50. 50 episodes of my Hall of Fame Friday biography series for all the Hall of Famers. It's going to take a while to get through all 300 plus, but we made it to episode 50, our first milestone. Did my Christmas card arrive yet? Not yet. It didn't look like it's supposed to show up in the mail today, but sometimes I think Everything doesn't show up on my list, but we will see. The mail hasn't got here yet. I have some orders ready sitting on the porch that they haven't picked up yet. And the mail has not been delivered yet. So after my stream, I'll go and check the infamous Logan 99. All right. What up, y'all, says Jay. And Big Ray says the infamous Logan 99. Locking 99. All right. Did go through. I got, uh, oh, for those that would be willing to help out, I am missing one, one card on my, uh, I missed it, and I didn't put it in there, and I didn't have it. It's right after the Joe Montana 170 card. I need a card number 171 in the 1990 College It uh, Notre Dame to complete that set. So I can't remember if it was Big Ray. Did you say you have a bunch of these cards? If you can find me a card number 171 and just put it in an envelope and slap a postage stamp on it and send it my way, I can finish off that set. I will keep this note on the side here so I know that I just need card number 171 for that college uh, football set that has the three different uh, Joe Montanas in it. Card number one, card number 40, and card number 170. But I'm missing, the only card I'm missing to complete that set is card number 171. So that would be awesome if anybody can help me with that one. Uh, off early today, took time off for mom's 70th, but getting ready to snow big, so party canceled. Oh my word. You took the day off, so you go to your mom's. So I am looking for card 171 as I watch. Thank you there, Big Ray. Appreciate you doing that. And it would be much appreciated if I can get that card in. Then I'll know what I have for uh, extra cards that might go up for auction on the auction block. I'm going to try and post some more auctions up after the live stream today. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to wait until 2.10. Until 2.10 and then we'll get into Nestor Chilax. Why is that? That is weird. Why is that black over there? That is weird.
Oh, okay, hold on a second. Let me see this. No. No. Can't zoom, can I? Untitled. Hmm. No, just wanted to check something. That is weird. Just notice that. Oh, here we go. That's where I'm slightly off, I guess. Let's do it that way. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. Well, that's the iMac. Overhead video. Where's the overhead camera? That's okay. Didn't hear anything. Okay. Did Barry Bonds get in? Uh, that won't end until uh, closer to the end of the month. Let me uh, let me uh, check to see if they did an update today on the balloting. I've got the handy dandy. Uh, Chuck gave me the handy dandy uh, spreadsheet here. Uh, it was dated as of yesterday. Let me see if they give an update to the voting process today. I guess I give an update each and every day. We got 209. Uh, should refresh before uh, 210 here, hopefully. That way I can give you an update on the Excel spreadsheet. All right. Ooh, Barry Bonds went down. He's down to 77.7. .7. Was updated today at 1241. And then we still have Roger Clemens is barely hanging on there at 76.5. But then David Ortiz is holding strong at 83.7. Uh, Kurt Schilling's at 59.6. I think he picked up a little bit of ground there. Let's see what they say that the summary is, yeah, Scott Rowland, Kurt Schelling's in at 59.6. He's edging up a little bit. I think he was at 58-something yesterday. So he's up to 59.6, almost making it to the 60 mark. Scott Rowland is at 68.7%. So we'll see. Barry Bonds is 2.7% above what he needs to get in. And Roger Clemens, 76.5, 1.5% above. What I can do here is, let me see, I'll put the, uh, the link in the chat here. How's that sound? That way, if you guys want to keep up to date yourself on this, um, Let's see, hold on a second. Where? Why is that? Okay. Let me get back in the chat here real quick. Get this refreshed. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. As soon as I get my computer refreshed here and get that link posted in there for you, whoever wants to have the link for that. Um, should be there in just a second. We've got five thumbs up, seven people watching, and we're going to get into Nestor Chilak Jr., umpire for the American League from 1954 to 1978. Okay, it says I started streaming nine minutes ago. I'd like to get to the 10 minute mark here. Let me put that there. Let me get this link for this. So I'm going to post a link, and that way you can check in on it. I leave it in one of my browser windows here. So I can just do a refresh, and it'll update the link for this spreadsheet as they make changes to it. Usually they'll post a change a day. Okay. Well, get it in there first. Let me get that off. There we go. 
So if you want, you can click on that link. Let me uh, pin it to the top of the chat here. Let me pin it to the top of the chat, and then we should be good to go. Kevin's Models and More. Hey, gang. What the heck? Just did that. Let me go back in here again. Let me pin this comment to the top. Get that off. Try one more time here. There we go. I think I wasn't hitting it in the right spot here. What the heck? Oh, hold on. There we go. What the heck? There we go. It should be pinned to the top of the chat now. All right. So there we go. You got the pinned comment on the top. As if you want to keep track of just added 121 cards to my alphabetical player checklist. Woohoo! There you go. Mark Texier has one boat. <laughs> All right. So let me get over here to Nestor Chilak and we'll go through his biography, which is not very long today. So it's a short biography for Nestor Chilak Jr. Nestor George Chilak Jr. Uh, was born May 11, 1922 and passed away February 17, 1982. He was only 60 years old when he passed away. Young guy there. Was an American umpire in Major League Baseball who worked in the American League from 1954 to 1978. He umpired in three eight. LCSs, 1969, 72, and 73, serving as crew chief in 1969 and 1973. He, <coughs> excuse me. He also called five World Series games in 1957, 60, 66, 71, and 1977 serving as the crew chief in 1971, in which he worked home plate in the decisive Game 7 and 1977. He also worked on six All-Star games, 1957, 1960, both games, 1964, 1973, 1978, working home plate in the second 1960 game in 1973. All right. Let me get a sip of water here real quick. All right, let me go back up. Since I did the refresh here, uh, A-Rod at 41% in his first year on the ballot. Looks like he will be on there for 10 years. Could be. Just added 121 cards. Hey, Kevin. Mark Texera. Seven plus inches of snow coming Saturday and Sunday. Oh, you're going to be able to go out and build a snowman there, uh, the fanatic car guru. I'm going to I'm gonna want to see a picture of the snowman you built. Uh, next year's inductees, Matt Noakes, John Candelaria, Bob Walk, and Bob Ojeda. <laughs> Kevin. Uh, uh, hey, Jonathan. <clears throat> uh, Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan. Jonathan Myers. Hey, Kevin. There we go. Okay. Uh, hey, Kevin from Big E. 8 to 10 inches coming here tonight and now. Oh, is it snowing there, there, Jay? All right. Agree. I agree, Lockin. I like Bueller. Uh, hey, Big E. Ortiz and Roland will get in this year uh, with the veteran selections in my honest opinion. Oh, they didn't do the veteran selections yet? I thought they did. Uh, Kevin, we're talking about three Hall of Fame. Three, the Hall of Fame, not Donald's Hall of Fame. 
<laughs> oh boy. <laughs> All right, let's continue on here. It is. Oh, okay, it's snowing there already. So as far as uh, uh, Nestor Chilak's early life, Chilak was born in Oliphant, Pennsylvania. His parents, Nestor Sr. and Nellie, were of Ukrainian descent. Chilak was the first of their five children. He attended the University of Scranton, <coughs> where he studied engineering. During World War II, he served in the U.S. Army in Europe. He suffered a shrap shrapnel injuries in the Battle of the Bulge which blinded him for several days and hospitalized him for eight weeks. He earned both Silver Star and Purple Heart during his service. After the war, he began umpiring amateur baseball in 1946 and returned briefly to college. As far as his career, after a year in amateur baseball, Chilak moved into the minor leagues as a Pennsylvania, Ontario, New York League umpire. <clears throat> he spent several more minor league seasons in the Canadian American League and the New England League and the Eastern League. He debuted in the major leagues in 1954. Uh, please send all Machados and Sean Greens to Kevin. <laughs> Kevin's model some more. Okay. Well, yeah, I... I, I Whenever I find a Sean Green, I put it in, in Kevin's stack. we got to build up his PC of Sean Green. That's for sure. <clears throat> All right. So Chilek said that two of his greatest thrills occurred in the early to mid-60s. In the 1960 World Series, he was umpiring when Bill Mazeroski of the Pittsburgh Pirates hit the home run that allowed the Pirates to defeat the New York Yankees. He worked Sandy Koufax's final game in the 1966 World Series, in which Kos Koufax and the Dodgers faced the Baltimore Orioles and Jim Palmer. Shylock worked the first American League Championship Series in 1969 on June 4, 1974. He was on the field in Cleveland for the 10th cent beer night. The Cleveland Indians had been struggling with low attendance figures, resulting in this promotion that attracted more than 25,000 fans to the game. Fans became unruly and incited fights with the players, sometimes pouring beer on them. Shylock declared the game a forfeit and he sustained a facial wound from being hit with a chair. <clears throat> he was the home plate umpire for the first major league game played by the Toronto Blue Jays in 1977 during a snowstorm at Exhibition Stadium. After retiring from the field in 1978, he became an assistant league supervisor of umpires. Shylock was the umpire in the umpire's dressing room at Comiskey Park on Disco Demolition Night on a July 12, 1979 doubleheader between the Detroit Tigers and the Chicago White Sox. Between the games of the doubleheader, unruly fans rioted because of damage to the field. The umpires refused to allow the second game to be played. When American League President Lee McField decided the White Sox must forfeit the second game. Shalak was the one who informed the White Sox owner, Bill Veek. According to family, his most memorable game was umpiring the 1960 World Series when, on October 13th, Bill Mazeroski hit a home run off reliever Ralph Terry at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. This was the only homer to end a World Series Game 7 in Major League history. Right, it is. Uh, please send all Machados. Okay, got that one. Kevin is a closet Machado Machado collector. Laugh out loud. I have some ready for Kevin, says Jonathan. All right. Pop back into our biography here now. As far as his retirement, following his retirement, he became a member of the Sports Illustrated Speakers Bureau and addressed a wide variety of groups, talking about the intangible lessons he learned during his years in baseball. Chilek died of a heart attack at the age of 59 in Dunmore, Pennsylvania, and was survived by his wife, Sue, his sons, Robert and William, and seven grandchildren. As far as his legacy, 
Upon his death, Bowie Kuhn said that few have ever been more respected in his field than Mr. Tyler. American League President Lee McPhail said he was considered an outstanding teacher and certainly one of the finest umpires in Major League Baseball in modern times. We are sure he will be a candidate for eventual Hall of Fame recognition. Baseball has lost a wonderful friend and a great umpire. He was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame by the Veterans Committee in 1999. In 2013, the Bob Feller Act of Valor Award honored Ch Chilak as one of 37 Baseball Hall of Fame members for his service in the United States Army during World War II. Okay, so let's give a Career capsulation for Nestor Chilak. He was an umpire, again, born May 11, 1922, Olyphant, Pennsylvania, in the United States. Died February 17, 1982, at the age of 59, in Dunmore, Pennsylvania, United States. He debuted in 1954, last appeared in 1978, so he had a 20. 4 year career. His special assignments through his uh, special assignments included All Star Games in 1957, 60, and 60 Game 2, 1964, 1973, and 1978. The American League Central ALCS. 1969, 72, and 73, and the World Series in 1957, 60, 66, 71, and 77. Again, he became a member of the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1999 by the Veterans Committee. His military career, he was a place of burial, S.S. Cyril Methodist, Catholic Cemetery in Peckville, Pennsylvania, United States. His allegiance was to the United States Service and Branch, United States Army, years of service, 1942 to 1945. He was in the Battle of the Bulge in 1944 and 1945 in World War II, and his awards, he got a Silver Star and a Purple Heart. So that, in a nutshell, is nutshell is the short but sweet biography for Nestor Chilak Jr. Okay, let me get up here real quick. Uh, the Pine Times. Blake's in a house. He's looking. Thumbs up. Baseball. Hello, the Pine Times. Uh, Biggie hurt. 35 sports cards and memorabilia says hello left behind when are you going to be reading peter cottontail to us sir oh i don't know i haven't checked recently is there let me uh dun, 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 peter cottontail i don't know i think the wizard of odds leading the poll let me go see real quick here let me go see let me check our current poll results in the community tab here before I finish off Nestor here. Let's see, it shows right now 78% want me to do live recordings. And it looks like uh, pre-recorded is only 22%. Okay. And then it looks like, ooh, they're closing the gap. Looks like we've got how many votes? 10 votes so far. We got uh, half. 50% is leaning toward the Wizard of Oz, 15 large book series. That that would probably be a, a, a couple year undertaking if I have to read that series. I was kind of hoping we could do Peter Cottontail first. Uh, the original Peter uh, Rabbit books by Beatrix Potter is currently at 10% as one vote. The Hardy Boys Mystery Series, with 58 books in the series, is at 40%. Uh, nobody wants me to read Nancy Drew yet. And The Wizard of Oz, 15 large book series. These are books. These are big books. I don't know, probably about an hour per reading, maybe. 
I don't know how long, but probably the first book, I believe it, it's the first book. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I could read War and Peace, right? That'll be a, that would be a long book all in itself. Somebody would have to send me that book, Bill. I don't have that book. Uh, this is some book series from my library. That's another story in another sense. I can't even get to all my books, but I, I do know where the Wizard of Oz book set is, the Nancy Drew, the Hardy Boys, and the Peter Rabbit. As far as other series that I have, that would be another undertaking. But that's where we stand, right? Nancy Drew, I like. Well, there you go. So get the word out. Uh, what I should do is maybe do an update so it'll be like a repost. But anyway, um, oh, I can delete that out of here. That was not necessary anymore. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so that is where we stand there for now. All right, go back here, go back into the live stream. Uh, so yeah, you got Peter Rabbit, Beatrix Potter, you got Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew, and The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Wizard of Oz, it's those four series, and right now The Wizard of Oz is winning. Two Fanatic says, Nancy Drew I like. You're trying to act like uh, somebody else there. Let me finish this off here. So Nestor Chilak, this is, I don't have a baseball card for him. Imagine that. They don't make many baseball cards of umpires. I'm sure they do have some out there somewhere. But here's his Hall of Fame plaque for Nestor Chilak Jr., umpire, American League, 1954 to 1978. Considered by many to be the non-parial umpire of the post-war era. A model of consistency with invariable accuracy both behind the plate and on the bases, respected by players and managers alike, effectively combining authoritarianism, tact, and a sense of humor, lauded for his willingness to lend an ear to objections. His illustrious 25-year career included six All-Star Games and five World Series assignments, served many years as a crew chief and then as assistant supervisor of the American League umpires from 1979 to 1982. There you go. National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum Cooperstown. New York, plaque of Nestor Chilek Jr. Elected to the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1999, the Baseball Hall of Fame Committee on Baseball Veterans, date of printing June 2008. So it is, this is a neat set, and I've got a complete set all the way up to the 2020 inductees. So, all I'm waiting is for the next set to come out this year, later this year, for the new Hall of Famers. Uh, he is in your Perez Steel set in the big green box. Shylack is. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but I don't have it in my Hall of Fame separation that I have here. That's uh, I mainly like to bring out the, the regular baseball card type things. I think he's in it. It's an oversized card there also, but that will be for another time. I do have these all binderized. Uh, believe it or not, they do have uh, binder pages that have four cards per page. So there's four. I think it's four. It's either four or six. I think it's four. Four on a page, I believe, in the binder for the. For the Hall of Fame postcards. So is is Kevin in the background here or is he driving home from work? Are you driving Kevin or are you still hanging out in the background mode here? Is Kevin doing a live stream today? That's all I'm trying to figure out if Kevin is doing a live stream today.
Oh yeah, you always got to check my community tab out. I have polls, I have questionnaires, I have contests sometimes that I put up there in my community tab. I list uh, my different checklists of different cards I'm looking for for different sets. Um, so yeah, anytime I do get cards in from those sets, I will post them up, that's for sure. So other than that, so yeah, Big E Hurt, go ahead and cast your vote. You get one vote. You can change it at any time. You can always change your vote at any time, but you can only vote once in the poll. You can change your vote to something else, but you can only vote once. And there's no changes today to the Christmas card contest. So, so far in the Christmas card contest, for those that would like an update on that, we have Gourmet Breaks, Scudder's Garage, Jonathan Myers, Michael Heath, Jonathan Clark, Faith Family Sports and More, Chad Hopkins, Chuck Dupree Sports Cards, Jason Coat, Lopin99, and Big Ray's Ball Cards and Auctions. So there are 10 entries. Uh, there's 10 entries in the baseball card the Christmas card contest. Then for the January giveaway, we are still standing strong at, as soon as it loads up here, I believe 50, and just over 50 entries. We'll see as soon as it loads up. Is your eBay store going good? Um, yeah, I had about $20 in sales yesterday. I think so far today I've had about six or seven dollars um, in sales. So each and every day I do sell something, which is kind of encouraging. 52 entries. Again, the way to get into the, the new 2022 giveaways is a super chat. So if you super chat, depending on the dollar level of your super chat, that's how many entries you get. Uh, the dollar level of your Patreon membership gets you product in the mail and get you that many entries. So if you're at the $1 level, you get one entry. If you're at the $5 level, you get five entries in the month free from being a channel member or a uh, Patreon member. Okay. And then anything else during the month is just through Super Chats. Just through Super Chats. So does anybody else have any questions before we wrap things up today? Matt Carter's in the house. How you doing there, Matt? Thanks for popping into the stream here. Appreciate you being here, brother. Uh, thummies up, thummies up, thummies up for me. It always helps to get those thumbs up and you get it at least 10. They might start directing people your way, shouting your channel out when you're doing a live stream. I will be getting ready to record some new content for my uploads that I do. All right. And uh, again, what we'll be doing, da, 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 da. I can look at my handy dandy schedule here, my YouTube schedule. Um, so we are going to close out the Christmas card contest on next Friday, the 21st which will be uh, episode 51 for Hall of Fame Friday. Uh, that 171 card is a tough bugger to find. Still looking. Oh, no problem. If not, just let me know there, Big Ray, and I'll, I'll try and find one online somewhere and just probably order one. But I might see how, how much I'm shy of completing another set as far as if I should get another couple cards or something to complete a second set. But no near the other. I, I probably won't even try competing, complete another set. I just want to get one that one card probably. So if if you can't find it, that's no problem. Um, how do you get a YouTube subscriber to stick? Oh, that's a good question to ask. That's a good question to ask. So what you do is. You can say, okay, yeah, I just hopped on your bus. That's good and dandy. But the only way for it to work right is to like 
comment, and subscribe, and turn on that notification bell. So you say like, what do you do? You like you can like this video, that's good, but that don't count. What you have to do is you gotta go to somebody's channel, watch a video that they have created. I usually go there and see if I can find one that's one or two minutes. Uh, let's see, does anybody know what's in two more days? Uh, my guess would be when somebody usually throws that in there, is it your birthday coming up, Matt? That's the only thing I can think of. Other than that, two more days, it's Sunday. Time to go to church again. But is your birthday on Sunday there, Matt? That probably might be what it is. It's usually what people say when they come in here. Like, comment, and subscribe, right? So like, comment to a video, that video you watch. So go to the person's channel, watch a video in its entirety. It, could be a, it has to be at least a two minute video or larger. Okay, it's your 25th birthday. Well, happy 25th birthday there, Matt Carter. Appreciate you coming in here two days before your birthday. That means that means when I see you next, probably next Tuesday on my next live stream, uh, I think um, I can say ha you had your 25th birthday and you're now 25. <laughs> happy birthday there. Uh, da, 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 there you go. Happy birthday. Happy early birthday, Matt. All right. So appreciate you being here, though, brother. Uh, January 16th is the obvious answer. Oh, there you go. Hmm. Does anybody know what's in two more days? January 16th. There we go. Happy birthday, Matt. All right. <coughs> So, yeah, so to like, comment, and subscribe. And then what you do is you hit that subscription bell. Turn on the notifications. And that way when that person that you're subscribing to goes live, you'll get a notification. Now, if you're like me, when I was grinding and moving and churning and trying to get my, uh, my 1,000 subscribers that I did within nine months, um, I was subscribing to everybody I could and trying to have them do the same to me if I did the same to them. And so, yeah, that's a lot of work. So, and then one thing I don't do like Bipster did, or, or uh, the fanatic card guru, he took off all his subscribers. Um, I don't know if that's such a good idea. I don't mind getting the notifications. They don't go anywhere. They don't occupy any space. So I'm probably subscribed to over 5,000 people, but that's fine. At least uh, I've subscribed to them, they've subscribed to me. I know probably I've only got 1,000, what are we at? 1,229 subscribers. So I'm 229 subscribers over my 1,000. But if by chance you start having people bailing out on you, you once you're monetized at 1,000 subscribers, you don't really lose your monetization in your channel. It's just it helps that way. How many? How many have been to the baseball hall of fame? Um, I have not been yet, but I was planning before the the corona took place. Oh, I got another sale. And they paid. So that means I think I'm up to six or seven dollars today now. But um, so that is my plan. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's how you get people to stick. Like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that notification bell. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. No, that's not for a super chat. It's just ringing that bell and turning on the notifications. All right. So other than that, uh, let's see. Hey, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Hey, Chuck. So Kevin is back in the stream again. Uh, a quarter of a century. Congratulations. Oh, there you go. Yep. Yeah quarter of a century from that there. All right. So Kevin, are you going live this afternoon? Just kind of curious. 
John, Donald Pombal for the Hall of Fame. Oh, I'm in my own Hall of Fame. I'm in my the Donald Blomdahl Hall of Fame. How's that sound? I'll just be in the Donald Blomdahl Hall of Fame. Uh, Biggie Hurt. Sports Cards and Memorabilia says, Hey, John. Hey, John. I'm trying to remember. I do got a question for uh, the Fanatic Card Guru. The Fanatic Card Guru. Guru. Donald, didn't you need John Fishman's updated? Oh, yeah, I did, but it's too late now, so I'll have to I'll have to get his. I don't think he emailed me yet. I told him the other day. He came into the stream, and told told him that uh, his card got returned to me, but that's okay. It was his P.O. box, I think, when he moved in. He actually, got his address. He forgot to. Uh, Okay, four o'clock. Okay, so four o'clock. I will try and pop into that while I'm here working on putting cards on eBay in my store. Kevin, better be going live because I left the gym early to make sure I was home. <laughs> oh, Chuck. Chuck, 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 Chuck. Well, yeah, um, I'll, I'll go until three o'clock. I'll try and get my hour, and if we can here, we are up to seven other than that. Uh, over, under, was at five. S who bet over the limit? Over, bet the over win. Just messing with you, Donald. Okay. Good excuse, Chuck. Questions are four and answers are free. Right answers are $2. In that case, I may postpone till next week. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Kevin. Oh, boy. Uh, Kevin's probably going to be doing... You, you doing your Fairfield Friday? Or do you got some, some family mail call packages to open up? Biggie, I went hard and fast to get it all in, and I can barely lift my arms now. <laughs> Oh my word, you doubled your workout speed so you could finish early to get back in time for Kevin's Models and Marsh live stream. Hmm. So other than that, um, not much else going on here next week on next Thursday uh, on the 20th, which is my daughter's birthday. Uh, is when we'll start taking down our interior of the house Christmas decorations. So it's still Christmas decoration city at our place in the house. Boom slangs in there, yo, at the phonetic card guru. Biggie Hurt, hope you took time to stretch, Chuck. Fairfield, Alex's Christmas card, late, and an Allen and Ginter blaster. Ooh, an Allen and Ginter blaster. That sounds like fun. That Kevin's all more than me. Benched 150 pounds 100 times because why not? Biggie always stretch after. Never before. Coolness. All right. So hopefully you are enjoying uh, my Hall of Fame Friday series especially. That's one that's going to take a long time, probably quite a few years. By the time I get into, uh, it'll probably be, I'll still probably go, be going through this series when Ichiro finally makes it into the Hall of Fame. And then I'll have to be filling in the ones that we haven't done. But at least um, they'll be in order. I wanted to hear Donald read that comment, laugh out loud. Which one? Fair, Fairfield, Alex, Alex's Christmas card, late, and, and Alan and Ginter Blaster. Or Kevin's All More Than Me, working on muscle endurance. There we go. Muscle endurance. 
Oh my. My, oh my, oh my, oh my. So other than that, does anybody have any other questions? If not, we can go ahead and get ready to wrap things up. I got lots of cards that I could list up on eBay, but never seem to have time to get to them all. If, it, if I can just do it magically and go wiggle my ears, ding, 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 and then all my cards would be on eBay, boy, that would be so sweet. Boy, that would be so sweet. I look forward to arm wrestling you, Chuck, but I want to wait until you turn 90. <laughs> if Chuck's 90, how old are you going to be, Kevin? Oh, you want me to go back earlier in the chat where you said about your live stream. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, at 2.36, Kevin said, I'll be live at 4. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, hey, Jonathan. Looking at all of Kevin. Next year's inductees. I oh, yeah, have Matt Noakes, John Candelaria, Bob Pwok, and Bob Ojeda. Hey, Donald and Gang at 2.12 for Kevin. Kevin, I think that was Kevin's first pop in the stream. Yes. 212. Hey, so I guess Kevin opened with Hey, Donald, and Gang. I'll be a young 85. Oh, okay, so Chuck's five years older than you. Okay, at least now I can figure out between you and Chuck, who's the older Chuck. I'm probably older than Chuck, I'm sure. I know I'm older than Kevin. <laughs> and I'm older than David, the fanatic card guru. Did you have a question for me? Yeah, I did. I'm trying to remember what it was now. Oh, yeah, I know what the question I was was for you, the Fanatic Card Guru. On eBay, if you have a purchase that you sent out to somebody on their verified eBay address, unless they didn't change it when they moved <clears throat> and forgot to, and then ordered something and it goes to their old address, how long do you hold on to something when it comes back? I've usually waited like a week or two. I was just just curious because I sent something out on the 23rd of December. Here, I'm going to show you real quick. And it came back. See, I sent something out in a plain white envelope with tracking. So in case you're wondering how that works for those that have never done the plain envelope with tracking, you do your eBay standard envelope, it gives you a tracking number, a reference number if needed, and then of course your return address, and then it sends it there, but this came back A-N-K, -A attempted, not known, and unable to forward. So should I do it 10 days after it's been sent back to me and then I can just take it out of the envelope and just put it back up for sale? Just kind of curious because I did get this one back in the mail. I mean, it's happened before. I've usually waited about two weeks, but I guess 10 days. Okay, so it's been 10 days. So let's see what card they paid for and <clears throat> it came back to me. At least this way, I can use the, uh, let's see, 
Yeah, the person's name was Ron Crum. What a crumb. Guess I can say I had probably it was probably a dollar that got donated to me. I would issue them a refund minus your shipping cost. Well, uh, I can always if if they ever question an item like that. I've never. <clears throat> it doesn't happen too often, but once in a blue moon, it does happen. So we'll see. Well, um, for those that don't know how I do my plain white envelopes, I'll go over that process real quick before we end the stream here in about less than 10 minutes. There we go. I took that out of there. I can't do anything else with that one now. And it looks like, oh my word, it was a Pro Set Joe Montana. Look at that. It was a Pro Set Joe Montana. A Pro Set Joe Montana. We got that Pro Set Joe Montana back. I can use the. I can use the. The car backing there, but I can put this Joe Montana back up for sale. Well, that's cool. That's a nice Joe Montana card there. I will put that in my things to list back up on eBay. Just was curious how you did that there, uh, the Fanatic. I would issue them a refund minus your shipping cost. Well, it's probably only going to be two quarters, 50 cents probably. If that, it was, it might, might, it probably was less than that that I'd be refunding to them, but if, they, if ever they asked, they probably realized what they did and said, oh no, the card must have went back to them. No sense in having them, giving them my new at my address and mailing it out, because then I'd be losing money. Montana will reappear in the eBay store. Yep. I'd email the guy and verify the address on the envelope with him. Yeah, these are these are one dollar cards, ninety nine cents most likely. If it was a seventy seven cent card, which I'm not doing that much anymore, because then I have to edit them when they go to a buy it now type uh, listing. It has to be at least ninety nine cents. So, and all my cards pretty much are that way. So that's what um, my my minimum. Uh, auction is now uh, ninety-nine cents. I did have some at seventy-seven cents. I'm like, man, I'm only making a quarter. If they want the card, they'll pay a buck for it. No, and I'm going to pay pay and shipping, and I'm only going to make about fifty cents on the card. Actually, less than fifty cents. Probably about forty. 46 cents. Scudder's Garage. Good morning. Morning, everybody. The fanatic. Card guru. Morning. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready to wrap things up here in about five minutes. 6 p.m. here in Georgia, Scudder. With snow in the forecast, right? We're just rainy and wet here in wonderful Washington. So other than that, haha, uh -huh, it's morning somewhere. Yeah, that's we had a, a family in our church. They just left and stuff, but their one son would always say, uh, "Morning, morning," no matter what time of day it was. And he, and when they said, "Good evening," he said, "Morning." It's morning somewhere in the world. That's right. Uh huh. It's morning somewhere. If they bought a card, whether it was fifty cents or fifty dollars, I would expect to get it. Just saying. Uh, I know, Kevin. I think it's somebody who just forgot about it. Because that's why I wait for them to say, how come I didn't get my card? But I don't get those from the people, so 
I will make a snow angel for you, Donald. Oh, that would be cool. I'd rather, instead of laying in the snow, I'd rather see you make a little snowman. Will you build a snowman? Do, 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 do. <laughs> but yeah, I know what you're saying there, Kevin. That's why if, if anybody ever, if I research it and I do keep a list of the ones I've gotten back, but the people have never reached out to me. I've I've had plenty of people say that, you know, my uh, what I what I don't like is if I send them in this oversized envelope and they have like a little PO mailbox, sometimes the post office will curl it, put it into the box. Or if they have a small mailbox, they might curl it and fit it in the mailbox. And then I'll have people sent open it up, even though I've put it in uh, the cardstock inside the envelope and stuff. And then uh, if they show me the damaged card, and I know that's the, the one I sent to them, and it's damaged, I just give them a full refund. Um, but yeah. Or give them their 50 cents back. But I've always given a full refund. I don't mind being out the dollar. Or whatever it ends up costing and stuff to... Uh, I'd rather get a, a decent rating on eBay... Um, then um, getting a bad rating for not taking care of the customer. Because inside my little notes, it does say here, right there, of course you have to get it first. Thanks for stopping by my eBay store. I truly appreciate your patron patronage. Please be sure to leave feedback. It is truly appreciated. And then I will always leave feedback for you. If you have any questions regarding your order, feel free to reach out to me. We aim to make things right if something is wrong. We will do our best to correct any errors. Thanks from Hall of Fame Veteran Sports Cards. Trying to make collectors happy with fairer prices. Donald L. Blondell Jr., U.S. Navy retired and U.S. Postal Service retired. So there we go. That is on there all the time. Of course, that's when they receive the product. I had four out of 20,000 say they didn't want items they bought. They just wanted positive feedback. Oh, yeah, and I, I do that. Once it, once it kind of uh, shows delivered and stuff like that, I've got my automatic feedback set up and things like that so out of 20,000 transactions uh, they didn't want the items they bought they just wanted positive feedback exactly you always want positive feedback if there's ever anything and something that I ship to you that there's something wrong just let me know about it and I am glad to fix it so other than that I'm going to get ready to wrap things up. We've got 10 thumbs up. We made it to 10. Just in time to get ready to sign off. I don't have any other content to go over, per se. But I do got to record a couple uh, hymn stories. I do need to record my ghost story for Monday. So that can load up and get posted. So other than that, we are just about at the hour mark. Just about at the hour mark. So uh, other than that, goodbye, you all. And as always, be blessed. There you go, the fanatic card guru. Said it best that. Just hit 10. Other than that, <laughs> laugh out loud. <laughs> oh, boom, we're up to 14. That was quick. Must have been some sleepers in the background. Just decided to give me my, my, my thumbs up. <laughs> but I appreciate that. Everybody that gave the thumbs up, thumbs up, thummies up for me. So this has been Donald Bombdahl, Hall of Fame Veterans, Sports Cards, and more. 
having been live this Hall of Fame Friday with Mr. Chilak Jr., the umpire for the American League from 1954 to 1978. Y'all take care. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Don't forget, take care of somebody when you come into the stream. Just got home from work. Glad I can help on the thumbs up. Have a good night, Donald. No problem. Thanks a lot there, Jay's Mix. Appreciate you being here. You all take care. Hopefully, we will see some of you later at 4 o'clock in about an hour at Kevin's Models and More for his Friday live stream. Okay? Take care. I was guilty of forgetting to thumb me up. Okay there, Dipster. Thanks a lot. So take care. We'll see you all on Tuesday. Have a wonderful and blessed weekend. And as always, like the Two Fanatic Car Guru says, goodbye. You all, as always, be blessed. Take care. And we'll see you all.